Hello. Ooh. Oh, sorry, hang on. Hello. Is there an official Project Moon merch store? I thought I looked for it and I couldn't find one. Last I heard, they were just sort of selling it via Twitter DMs or something. Anyway, hello! I should launch the game, shouldn't I? They sell it through Ham Ham Pang Pang and it's super expensive to import. I recently found out um, I, I put an order through a site called uh, Neokio, which is a, a place in Japan where they buy things to um, ship. So they basically have a warehouse and a shipping thing. So they buy from local shops, from like Japanese only, uh, uh, just, like charity shops, uh, what are they called, uh, flea markets, that kind of thing. And then the idea is you get it all together in the warehouse and then they ship it from there. So I ordered some uh, Milgram merchandise and I will be showing it off in a future anime style where I cover the character for whom the merchandise is. Um, and it's really, really high quality. Oh god, almost knocked something over. It's really high quality stuff. Very pretty. But, um, yeah, that, that surprised me with that being a thing. And, like, it was slow. It wasn't a quick thing at all. Let me just check my audio while I'm rambling. It wasn't a quick thing at all. Yeah, it's buzzing. There. Sorry, I normally do that before we begin. Uh, it wasn't a quick delivery, but the fact that it was available at all, the fact that I could get it, is incredible. Right. PM was and still kind of is still too small for overseas merch to be feasible. That's fair. I can understand that. Look at that art. Look at that. Did you see that art? That was a commission I recently got uh, by Erin. <clears throat> right. Sorry. Hello. Sorry, we rambled a bit about Project Moon. Who's ready for some low-cut kimono, kimonos? Kaminos. All of the art that's appearing in this thing, I'll just quickly mention this. All of the art appearing in this is either fan art, like that one, uh, and that one. Um, official art, uh, which I've had commissioned for my channel. Or stuff that I've commissioned from other people, like um, uh, that one I pointed out. Uh, I've also got stuff like the Drusha from when I was trying to improve D&D. That's an official one. Uh, you know, so that I've got all of these different different kinds of art in this slideshow. But if you do any Garen with a fan art, you, all you have to do is send it to me, either on the Discord or by my uh, work email, which is uh, Garen Reaver. Um, to up your Garen Reaver, sorry, got confused a moment. To up your Garen Reaver at gmail.com. Uh, and I will stick it on my website. I've got a fan art gallery on my website, but also um, stick it in this slideshow. And yeah, it has been my Discord profile since I got it. Basically, two minutes after I got it, it was my Discord profile. Anyway. Hello. Here we are. So, intro. Hello and welcome back to Garion River vs. Live, Library of Ruina. We are an urban plague. And in unrelated news, we're also at the urban plague status in this. Uh, between streams, I did a little bit of extra work. I went through... Um, what did I do? 
I updated Dex. So I updated Dex with the Urban Play cards we've got so far, specifically the um, the Yakuza ones, uh, because they had a load of Slash, a load of Bleed, uh, I think also some Pierce as well, and some good Defend cards. So basically I've gone through and I've upgraded like, oh, at least probably about half, half the decks have had a slight buff. Uh, let's see, like, Malkuth has Rules of the Backstreets. Um, the brawling ones haven't that, like, I completely overhauled your sod. So he's now got stagger damage and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, all of these are now updated. They should be better, they should be more powerful across the board. Uh, what I'm going to try and do... Oh, yes. Also, Garen is now sporting the Sayo page. Uh, so is Hod, because they both lean into um, Slash and Bleed. I moved it round, so Yasod is Mars. Uh, but currently, nobody is actually using Olga. Because all of these worked with the ones they already had. So I believe... The Olga page. I've got one Seo page left. I believe, yeah, the Olga page is actually unused, so that will probably go to the next big one I get. The next um, patron. Uh, hey, Melon. I do know an overseas store is a pipe dream. I just wish they, uh, they had even just a career-only merch store. Then you could go to a proxy service or something. Uh, a career-only online merch store, yeah. At some point, I'll draw something into the slideshow once I no longer feel incompetent in my drawing capabilities. I've I've also been I've been trying to draw. Um, I set myself a uh, I. Oh, I'm gonna be honest. I saw that thing PewDiePie posted. Is like, oh, I drew one once a day for a hundred days or whatever. I didn't watch the video. I just took the idea and it's like, okay, I'm gonna give it a go. So I I have been drawing as well, and I'm terrible. I'm I'm very I'm not very good. And even when I do well, like even when I I think oh the 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 body and the pose looks really good on that, I completely fuck up the face. I always mess up at least one thing, distinctly. It's really bizarre. Anyway, um, right. So yes, I I spent a little while between streams updating everything. What I plan to do is. I'll basically do that every time after a stream. So, uh, I will because we only do like two proper battles each stream, if that, and like we tend to replay them to get to unlock more of the cards. Um, if uh, I don't want to do much deck building on stream, if I can avoid it because it is slow and awkward, and I like to double and triple check things. So, what I will most likely do is do most of that off stream, and then catch you up on what I've changed. Uh, has he had any changes? Yeah, he's had a couple of defense cards. So yeah, uh, that's the plan. Eventually it'll be one battle of stream. Well, it was like uh, Lobco. Lobco started as, oh, I've done 10 days in one stream. God, this, this, this game isn't going to take long to finish. And then by the end, it's like, fuck me, I've been on this one day for three streams. So yeah. Half of the calls for this. Right. Uh, we have general receptions to do. Ah. Well, there's one just with Gin. Okay. A rusted chain link. Look at them. They look really weird. Plus one damage against enemies with bleed. Plus one staggering against enemies with bleed. That is a straight increase on the um, the butchers, the the Backstreet Butcher Boys. Backstreet Butcher Boys. Um, it is two acts. Let's give Malkuth. Actually, what damage are they doing and, and receiving? So they endure blunt and they're weak to pierce. So it should be Netzak.
I do appreciate that last playthrough I watched use pre-made decks made by guides. I always appreciate what streams can cook up. I would be very, very hesitant to use pre-built ones because in a deck building thing, I feel that's a waste. Uh, particularly when there are so many different things and, you know, a pre-made one's most likely just going to go for the meta. Why do we all have to do this just to deal with the... Why do we have to do this all just to deal with the Kurokumo? It's to get hold of their weak points, so don't complain too much. Why do you have to do this just to deal with the Kurokumo? <laughs> have you heard of our Lord and Saviour, Angela? I'm working on a novel, you know. <laughs> right. Nice rolls, guys. Really good rolls. So, I want that one to show where they're attacking, and that one to show the clashes. I ended up using guards because Endgame was kicking my butt. <laughs> Maybe when we get there, we will see. Alright, a brawl seems like a pretty good bet. Three to seven. Good for you then. He's not hurting me, so I can just ignore him entirely. Inflict bleed on self. Interesting. Uh, so, to remind you and to remind me, let me just get me a little notebook of how they all play. Uh, Netzak is a low cost, high attack rate. Uh, Dreaming is a brawler, and Becca is Pierce. Oh no, it's an Angela apologist quick throwing <laughs> an A apologist to make the solution neutral. <coughs> hey, Dreaming. Uh, three to six. So, what have I got here? Oh yeah, that is actually, that's a straight, straight one, isn't it? Mm. Okay. <laughs> Aiden did nothing wrong. I mean, I still maintain that Carmen is not a good person at all, but Angela's worse, and I still I like her more. Weird, I know. Uh, apologies, I've got a cold today. Hopefully, uh, that won't be too big an issue. All right, I'm gonna have to go with the Blade Whirl. My best chance of beating that. Can't do tailoring. I can retaliate. Actually, yeah, that's... Oh, no. I, I can't intercept, can I? Because they're all the same speed. It's just going to go with whichever one. Because <laughs> she's petty and it's funny. Sorry, I read that as she's pretty and she and it's funny. Oh, why are you why are you taking Angela's side? Because she's pretty. <laughs> no. Uh, I mean, is there any reason not to go for that? He's got no stagger to restore, and I'll just get a hit in, but with a with a blunt. I'm just going to ignore him then. Not going to bother. Not going to engage. Yeah. Oh, damn. Nice. 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 Good work. Overall, not bad at all. That is an excellent way to describe Angela. What, petty or pretty? <laughs> I have enough of that attitude at home. No need to see it in my video games. I'm not a fan of Angela, she reminds me too much of my teenage brother. Wow, okay. Mm, let's see. Hmm. That's tricky. I'm used to them trying to hit me. They all go defensive first. Inflict bleed on self. 
Okay. One to five, four to seven. I feel like he's going to get hit on that second one, but... Nice. Not bad. Nice, staggered. Yeah. He took a lot of stagger damage there. There's probably a method to their self-bleed madness. Yeah, I expect they're building up something. After a successful pierce, reduce stagger resist. Deal stagger damage to all enemies. Good with the stagger damage. I've been sort of saving up, so. Ooh, and then I roll poorly. Inflict three bleed to self this scene. All dice on this page gain two power. Shies. Have you read their passives? Yes. Yeah, they all have the same passive, yeah. Alright, that's a powerful one, so I'm going to strike that back. You, three to six. Ah, oh, Netzak isn't very good at fighting. <laughs> He's not good at the one-to-one. -one. He's lots of weak hits, but that doesn't help if he gets targeted. Ah, oh, we have a four, good. So what I will do is No, don't do that then. All right, we need to take him out if we can. Don't get staggered. Nice work. Staggered. Good. Good. Yeah, now he's going to get messed up by tailoring. Is that one here doing their job? I'll give that to Becca. Might as well have fought the Kurakumo clan head on. How strong are they? I haven't seen a payoff for them bleeding themselves. I guess they're just powerful cards. I guess that's the payoff, the, the trade-off. I can intercept this. Intercept with a tailoring? Sure. Yeah, I could do that. <laughs> uh, destructive. Stay calm. I want to finish him off. Yeah, they're fucked. Nice! Nice, staggered. Maybe the grunt's done of the big thing? Oh, I suppose, yeah, there is a second act. <laughs> I bet you can't even read. But this has worked out. This has been a fairly good build. I mean, Dreaming has suffered the most because of the brawling and the fact that he's been targeted. Boom. Law wise, it makes sense. Madly done augments and weapons, not personalized. Her, the user. Okay. Interesting. Oh, I'm a cleric, you know? Yes! This will make a great chapter title.
I don't want to die. This ain't fair. There might be something like facade. Basically, if suffering from bleed, you get extra damage. Ah, Jikan. Oh, he's got a speed. Plus one against enemies with bleed. Plus one for every five stack of bleed on self. Wow. Every five. Wow. Now die. Inflict five bleed to self this scene. Oh, God, that's nasty. Uh oh, we're in trouble. Go ahead, Nexac, you can fuck them up. You aren't planning a wimpat already, are you? Hey, get your shit together. Okay, roll poorly there. Fortify. Yeah, not good. Why would you open with that? Why would you pos what possible reason could you have for opening with that? Oh. Oh, will that... No, that won't clash. I don't know. I don't think it will. I'm still not certain. Just ignore frontal dodge. It's a wasted move. I thought it was, because yeah, theoretically that will go against nothing because I'm not clashing against that dice. Instead I'll clash against that one and he's just wasted it because he's got no stagger to regen. I mean, pr presumably the 2 to 7 defense will come in, but still that's not, I mean 2 7 defense could be a lot, so maybe that's why he did it. with the retaliate. It will stall the defensive dice, yeah. Alright, let's go for this one. Nice! Well, that's not doing much, is it? Oh god, he just wails on him. See, that's why I built him like that, because there's a thing for, like, extra stagger damage. I can't remember what it was, though. Uh, recover HP, that's tempting. Actually, that's pretty good, because we're, um, we're already hurt. Uh, dreaming is... What's happened? Oh. <laughs> I think it just really zoomed in. That was weird. I thought the entire field has disappeared. Uh, she has the pierce uh, already. She's got tentacles. Reduce the stagger resist. Oh no, sorry for Netzak. <coughs> no, there was something. I don't remember what it was. What have I given him? Uh, on a clash win. He shouldn't have calmness. I think I gave him that because there wasn't much else, but he's not built to win clashes. He's got low power, multiple attacks, you know? Mm. Yeah, I'm not certain about how I built him. Anyway. Three to six. Finally, something I can retaliate against. Uh, yes, Dreaming used to be, but I switched it around because I didn't like the idea of uh, Becca the Cleric being the brawler.
Probably built around times like these. Yeah, I need to remember that as well. I need to, um... I need to make sure I use his cards. But, like, he did gain it. Ah, alright, here's a question for you that I would like answered. Because I'm uncertain about it. What is the difference between power and damage? So, strengthen increases the power of offensive dice by one. But then you get, like... Uh, do I have anyone? There. Uh, slash... Uh, Alright, assume that just said slash damage. Uh, plus one. So what is the difference between, um, like, slash damage plus one and a slash attack having power plus one? Damage is the result, power is the roll. But surely that's irrelevant. Or unless the damage has to hit. So it doesn't improve the roll... But it causes more damage when it... So basically, power is better because the power has a higher chance of getting through the defences. Is that correct? Power is added to the rolls. When the clash is won, damage is added and modified by resistances. Okay, so yeah. Uh, power is... Power is the, the better one because power can win the fight, but damage is what's dealt after the fight. Okay. Cool, good to know. Thank you for clarifying. Right, uh, two, oh, three to seven, that's not good. But I'm in, uh, Netzak endures the damage he's going to deal. Guess I'll just go with that. Uh, can you remind me, on hit, does that need to win, that doesn't need to win the clash, does it? That just needs to hit something? So both of these are going to trigger on hit, is that correct? Because, like, he's paralyzed. I don't know, I can't remember. There are niche situations where damage bonuses matter, but I can only think of one in particular, okay. Alright, I'm going to go for him. You you might be fucked, mate. Nah, nah, you're not going to be fucked for that. That's fine. On a win. They just need to hit you or on a win. Uh, which is it, guys? Alright, I hit with that one. So that's a boost to power. So that's actually four to seven. Oof. Nice. Good work, guys. Hitting requires winning the clash or it to be one sided. Oh, yeah, of course. That's the difference. Then it can work one sided, whereas uh, on a clash win, it can't be one sided. Netzak's team's doing quite well. They used to be a really weak team, but they're, they're not bad now. I will right, we'll go with that one. Uh, one to eight, three to eight. See if we can kill off that guy. Yep. Shit, what did the boss send that wuss with me? Oh, there's a boss? He's not the boss. Good to know. Yep, don't worry, I'm I'm not attacking him. Like the damage he's taken is purely defensive. I can tailor, get tailored. What's that, um, Brooklyn Nine Nine line? It's like uh, you were needling him all night. You you almost knitted him a new suit. I'm gonna tailor you. So I'm gonna. Ah, I've, I, I've got a line for you. <clears throat> I'm going to tail you so hard, you're going to look fantastic at your funeral. Yes!
Alright, just get them crushed to try and balance it. And then we'll just go for you and... And again. Hold on, dreaming. Staggered. Brilliant. Oh, nope. Dreaming's down. Shame Ryan isn't here to die instead. Damn, I'll never finish that novel. Three to seven. Yeah, see if you can intercept that. And then just bloody hammer him with everything you got. Staggered. Yeah. This has gone really well. I can't tailor, so I'm just going to have to hope that it's going to be enough. Yeah. Hashtag justice for Ryan. That went really well. I'm quite pleased with that. Netzach's team uh, functioned very well. Oh, look at that headgear. While possessing... <coughs> Excuse me. While possessing Fragment of the Universe's Abnormality page, 5% chance to boost Stagger. 5% chance to boost Pierce Damage by 1. And 2% chance to boost Stagger by 1. I got 3 uh, Book of Jakan. Right, I, I will very quickly pop to the toilet. I'll be right back. <clears throat> hey, Ranta. Ugh. Ow. Right. Um, first things first. I need to change on kill. Complete. 
Uh, also, we got some thingies. Oh my god! I mean, that's certainly a dream. <laughs> it's the maid hat. Sure. Alright. Oh. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Dreaming Author now has, um, has a weird head. Head and uh, Becca now has the maid. Oh, which means you didn't see the change I made to Becca. Um, yeah, I, I gave her the the kill line. I, I'm not ignoring you, there's just a delay on the YouTube stream. That's why you should definitely watch on Twitch. Because there's, <laughs> no, there's less delay. <clears throat> anyway. Right, let's uh, burn some books. I didn't get a, a G can, a G can page, but I got those, which is good. I mean, that's not a bad move. Two to seven defense is pretty good. Uh, it's not terrible. Three to six for a one cost isn't bad, but the inflict bleed on self is the, the trade-off. Mostly low cost things, only G can seem to have like stronger ones. Yeah, didn't get any good ones. Damn! Alright, I'm gonna burn another one of each. Good, now die. Inflict five bleed to self. All dice on this page gain three power. That is really tough. Or rather, yeah, that's really tough anyway, but with Jukan's ability to make that um, even stronger. Head to head. That's pretty good. Slash as well. Okay. I think what Luca means is I don't need to keep the book, so I don't need it for like any um, uh, any uh, receptions or anything. Oops, sorry. Hmm. Head to head is probably the worst card in Chainlink's arsenal. Uh. I'm tempted to refight that because I really want to get Jakan's page. Ah, <laughs> uh, my page then, my page. Sorry guys, my page. Which one's head to head? Uh, all right. Yeah, I'm, I'm very tempted to refight that to try and get that. Um, That key page. Let's try another uh, another thing. See how they get on with it. Like I expect this lot are going to be. Oh, actually, before we do, let's update them a bit. Uh, you don't have it, but you do. You are unfinished. I guess I. 
got distracted when I was doing, um, who is this? Larm. Got distracted when I was doing Larm's, uh, Larm's stuff. Oh, no, I didn't. It's because it's five cost. Sorry, six cost, because I put in Remembrance for some reason. What else do we got? What else we got? I don't think he inflicts any bleed. No, he doesn't. He's a brawler. Got two left to spend. See, this is why I do this off camera, because it's a very slow process. Because you've got to keep, like, going out and checking what they do and then going, oh yes, he doesn't deal any pierce. And then you go back in and then you have to continue where you were. So it's it's not a quick thing to do. I'll give him that for the extra light. And I'll just give him that for the slash until I need it elsewhere. Did you really British? Wow, no I didn't. I did not British if I Becker. I made her Australian. Or my cleric. Hello, or my cleric. I love clericing. One of my favourite things to do, clericing. Just clericing about. Um. All right, I'll get rid of Rain's page to instead deal extra damage and stagger. And I've got a spare one, so I may as well just give him a chance of paralysis as well. Love the ally, ally death quote. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so I'm going to retry that fight. And this time use um, Team Hod. Because they should get increasingly buffed by them bleeding themselves. And hopefully I'll get some Jakan. If we fail this, our syndicate won't be safe. Hello and welcome. Alright. We go for you. One to five, four to seven. Yeah. You. I can just ignore. Though, I don't need to ignore, I can hit with that, which will buff this. And then hit with that. And then you can intercept three to six. Uh, yeah, go with the brawl. Not great showing. Nice. Oh, good hit. You may want to swap Netzak's page with Olga. Right now, his page buffs defensive dice, and I don't think he uses any. Hmm, true. I'm sure there was a reason I didn't do that. I don't remember what it was. Slash gains 1 to 3 power. I'm going to give that to Hod. Make her a beast. A slashing beast. Three to six. I've got four now, so I can ink over. Yeah. I'm just going to ink the hell over you. One to five, four to seven. Three to seven, three to six. Mm. 
Yeah, on turns I use Sharpen Blade, I should lean into it further. Hod is going to be a beast this round. And then we'll just go for... for you at the end. Nice. 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 Boom. Boom. Oh my god, Hod basically just staggered two people on her own. She is a monster and I love it. Have we staggered the entire enemy team? We Oh no, we didn't quite. We almost staggered the entire team in one round. Uh three to seven. I can't intercept. I'm gonna have to do that then to just take out one of them at least. On clash lose. Yeah, uh, 25. Alright, we'll go for that one. And that one. Is that going to kill? That's definitely going to kill, so no. That one. And you. Oh, yeah, of course he has two speed dice. I forgot about that. Hmm. Just ink over him. And... Clean up. God, this feels so powerful. Also, I did consider putting Hod in the in the kimono. But I decided it it wouldn't be respectful. Uh look at the dead Hod. We're really leaning into Hod. Wow. Wow. I'm doing nothing. Die from your own bleed. It may have been bleed that I inflicted. Why is he still alive? How is he still alive? He bled. Can you not die from bleeding? That's bollocks. Sharpen blade. Sky clearing. I'm just gonna freaking lean in with everything. You're you're gonna die now, mate. You're dead now, mate. <laughs> I love buffing slash like that. Yeah, this is really cool. Bleeding only ticks when they use offensive dice, right? Oh, of course, because it's different to burn. I literally I learned this in the PM campaign. I'm in a. a Project Moon TTRPG, and I literally learned that difference on Saturday when we played. So, yeah, I, I just didn't clock. Okay. Uh, just go straight for ink over. Smack him. Defense back. Oh, damn. Oh, sorry, I forgot the face. I mean, she's still a monster. Ooh.
That is a very good hand for brawling. Wait for the face. There! Boom! Oh my god. Hod, I love you! Sorry, that slipped out. Holy shit! <laughs> hmm. Alright, what is the best way to raise the emotional level? Should I not kill him this turn? Will that continue to raise the emotional level? I mean, this team is bloody killer. I love this team now. He's so good. <laughs> you could have predicted Garen's true feelings towards Hod. I hide it so well. Clashing while keeping them alive is the most reliable way. Right. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I'll just try this. I'll just try hitting it. Alright, so it's gone up. It's not quite there yet. Twice as many stack of bleed. Okay. It's okay, everyone likes Hob. We just hate her taste in elevator music. Hey, puppet face. No spoilers, Luca. Hmm. Alright, well, in that case, let's try clashing. That's done it. 3.6 copies. Alright, kill him guys, we're done here. all over but the crying <laughs> no battle symbols and we got three more book of jikan uh, i think it's good for giving yourself negative emotion coins not sure if it helps raise their emotional level when enemies win clashes they also gain emotions so you still get the bonus uh, it is such a terrible card you can clash with it without hurting the enemy much so i guess it works both ways all right, what did we get? Oh, no, we didn't get any symbols, did we? Uh, we got some books. Yeah, two of these. So I can still get one more because it's um, the purple one. Sure, I would like to do that. One more, please. Oh, 
I didn't get one more. Can I get one more? Yeah, I can. Oh, I might fight that one. Off stream or something just to get it. Because I don't want to fight him again right now. Right. Uh, you said there was another general reception. Not that one. Not that one. Not that one. No. 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 Oh, interesting. I guess it's got to be a combination then. There we are. Yeah, I would have got there, Luca. Give me a minute. Well, give me a chance, rather. Okay. Workshop affiliated fixes. One act, one floor. PS Mastery, PS Dice Power Plus One. Bloody hell. Solidarity. At the end of the scene, if all allies are alive, gain one strength next scene. If all other allies are dead, inflict two feeble on self instead. This passive ability is only active if the act started with, two, with one or more allies. That's a lot. It's also something I would never, ever, ever put on. <laughs> because it's so bloody expensive. But I want that PS power. Netzak is going to get a boost. How are they against Slash? Weak to Slash, weak to Slash, weak to Slash. Well, they're going to get Slash to shish, aren't they? Ha <laughs> ha! Who's ready for this? Is this going to be okay? We put it together correctly, right? Let's show off some firepower. Don't think we should underestimate them. They're all wearing hoodies. It's really threatening. Three to seven. Let's try brawl. Wet. Restore light, gain strength. Damn. But on Clash Wind specifically. Ooh, okay, yeah, let's reconsider that. Let's go for destructive impact instead. I'd rather eliminate that than eliminate their Clash Wind than. You know, just compensate. I can't ink over. Yeah. Yeah, let's go for that. That's got a decent chance. And I will intercept this on 3 to 5 with some blade sharpening and a clean up just for fun. Time to clean up just for fun. I'm going to fuck you all right up. Good work. And then you get hit hard. And hard will mess you up. I like to use solidarity occasionally because it's easy dice power, not restricted to a single type of offensive dice. But yeah, it's hella expensive. <laughs> dun, ba -dun, bum. Bum, ba -dum. Boost Pierce Dice Power by one for this scene. Mend weapon. Interesting. This turn is going to be rough, you reckon? I mean, it's two to eight. Can't afford that, sadly. I'll do that one so I will hit back at least. Hmm. Can't ink over. Oh, wall instead.
Sharpen blade. Sharpen blade. And clean up. Clean up an aisle, you. Oh, they're strengthened. That's why it's rough. Sorry, I didn't see that. It doesn't matter. I'm trashing them because my guys are incredible. I said that right before Garen got beaten up. Whatever. Axe. On hod. Think I'll give up already. Oh, you'll see. This thing's broken. Mend weapon and cards like it of the origin of much shenanigans. Uh, let's ink some people over, shall we? Damn, she's got so many abilities. <laughs> I love it. I love Hodge. She's so good. I'm not taking that one back. I didn't take the other one back either. I don't know who I'm trying to... Don't know who I'm trying to trick here. Uh, I think I will intercept. Yeah. Intercept that one. Crash that one. Crush. Staggered. I can't go on anymore. Hold. Can't let myself get distracted by accidents like everybody I know and love dying. Yeah, these classic distraction accidents. Distractedents, I call them. As your learning power stack is always viable. Something I learned when I was building the decks was that some things can have the same effect but different names for the abilities and that allows you to stack it. Like, uh, which one was it? Is it one of these early ones? Here, uh, slashing prowess of a grade 8 fixer and a minimum offense, both are slash stagger damage plus one. So although the effect is the same, because they are different abilities, you can stack them. So that's, like I've given Yasod tons of stagger boost. Oh yeah, I was going to look at uh, why I gave the defensive dice. Oh yeah, he literally has no defensive dice, you are correct. Why did I not give him Olga then? Draw one of the hand is empty. I don't know. I don't know why I didn't give him Olga. I totally should have. I'll switch that over now. Uh, let's see. Zulu Rain Sansvai. Zulu Rain Sansvai. Zulu Rain Sansvai. Zula Rain Sansvai, Zula Rain Sansvai, Zula Rain Sansvai, Zulu Rain Sansvai, Zulu Rain Sansvai, Zulu Rain Sansvai, Zulu Rain Sansvai. Zulu Rain Sons. That's fine. Alright, I will come back to this. I'm I'm not gonna I haven't activated them. 
because I remembered I did just get something which boosts Pierce. Oh. The game is cheating. The game is cheating. Clap. It's not giving me the pierce. I feel cheated. It's cheating. Ooh, wow. Boost pierce dies powered by two for this scene. Wow. That passive was a nine cost? I missed that. Alright, so a load of good pierce cards. Now all the enemies will have passives you can't have. That's bollocks. <laughs> Wasn't I saying last time? Oh, it's fair because they they don't do anything we can't do. Anything they have we can get too. Alright, I don't want to mess around with this because this could take me a little while to work out. So I'm going to try not to mess with this. So I will hopefully not need to use Netzak much today because I'll, I'll redo it. I'm going to make a note of this actually. Because the last time I forgot what I was supposed to be doing, it's like... Hang on, I knew there was something I was supposed to be overhauling on on a library, but I don't remember what it was and I had to rewatch part of my stream to remember. Uh, net Zack Pierce. Right out. Did I I did give him the passes. I didn't give him the passes back. Boom, 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 boom. Did I break something or is Gary muted? I'm not muted. Hello. <laughs> you said that after seeing four scratch that's. I remember that now. Yeah, no, I do remember them cheating that. That was cheaty. I uh, just remember to enable the passives again. Yep, yeah, we're good. Right. Oh, are there any more general receptions? That one just brings up Rusty Chain. That's the workshop. I'm guessing that's all there is, just the workshop and the Rusty Chains. No one you could beat. Are you saying there is another one? Is that what you're saying, Luca? You're really bad at not giving spoilers. <laughs> There's a third one. I will find it. I will beat it and I will be proud. There it is. He's ready to be proud. If a character discards a card, draw one card. Okay, that's a powerful one. When discarded. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! Uh oh. Also, it's called Bottom Deal. That sounds weird. Hey, what's your ability? Bottom Deal. What? Hanafuda. There are three general receptions for each danger level. I don't know which ones I've done. <laughs> I can't remember. Another unique card, though. Oh, she's an object A art. Weak to blunt. So that means it'll probably be your sods crew. We are outnumbered. Oh, we are outnumbered. That's a good point. Uh, a character discards a card, draw one. If they discard a card, restore a light. Oh, God, that is... That is nasty. Yeah, I think I am going to just walk away, and I'll come back later. <laughs> Let's do this one instead. 
Book of the Distortion and Zvi South. Oh, actually, Credenza. Where were we up to? Read those, read those. Did I read all of these? I think I did. Urban Plague. There are many important things to consider as a fixer, and attire is one of them. A fixer's attire is the most effective way to signify the image of an office. It's important for an office to show that it has formality and class. Most offices have a set dress code for that reason. As much as it's necessary to choose the right attire according to the code, the most important factor is the fabric that the clothing is made of. Quality fabric can offer better protection, lighten the wearer's weight for quicker movement, or allow the wearer to carry heavy weapons as large as their body. Those who create and provide such fabric are called tailors. We are tailors that, who consume people and make silk out of them. Whether it's melting people inside our belly and congealing them into a mould, or it's unravelling humans into the thread they're really made of, the fundamentals do not matter. This technology doesn't originally belong to us. We merely took hold of a technology that came off patent when a wing was broken. That's a cool concept. Like, off patent. The only thing that matters is the silk made from humans has strength that differentiates it from ordinary thread. Only those who crave it visit us. Cloth weaved from human silk, oh god the term human silk, possesses various powers depending on the human strengths. Some humans may have a strong body, others may be fragile but wise, and yet another may flaunt incredible speed. Since the silk reflects the characteristics of the human it was made from, it, there are many forms and powers of silk as there are humans in this world. Therefore, there is more to being a tailor than simply weaving silk carefully. Picking the right people to meet the demands of the client is the most important. Hastily making silk out of a human that looks courageous on the outside might end up yielding useless cloth that does nothing but bolster courage, so one must be careful when picking the right material. <clears throat> Not every piece of fabric is accessible, however. It takes more than cash to purchase high-class fabric. One must earn the favour of tailors first and foremost. Many tailors will only give their best fabric once the trust between them and their client has been established after complex turns of events. Because of that, tailors who make high-quality fabric usually be belong to an organisation and create cloth exclusively for them. But we are different. Until the Index gave us a prescript, we did our work without taking orders from anyone. Unchained to any syndicate or other organization, we are free, as some may call it. Eat 15 sweepers and extract silk from them to make fabric. Oh, that was their last precept. Prescript. Interesting. They're a really cool concept. Uh, we didn't do stray dogs. I thought we did stray dogs. We definitely didn't do molar. We have Ola's, uh, uh, Olga's page. We did the molar office. Uh, we didn't. Uh, Luca, I request that you make suggestions or advise, but please don't tell me what to do. It comes across, across as quite blunt and a bit rude. Right. Stray Dogs. No, I haven't read Stray Dogs. I haven't read about tattoos. I'm really tired, so I'm going to call tonight here. Have a good stream, everyone. Thank you, Nathan. Hopefully you'll check out the VOD later. Yeah, I've read this one. Stray Dogs. It's true that our syndicate's sort of intimidating and got a tight hierarchy going on, but the bond between members is strong. We're actually leagues nicer than those office fucks who exploit and abandon each other with every breath. Those crooked bastards will do anything for profit. And some, I'm sometimes in awe of the shit they pull. I actually used to be a rat. Yeah, those filthy and wretched rats everywhere everyone looks down on. It's amazing that I'm now standing shoulder to shoulder with the dogs, ain't it? I busted my ass crawling up the ladder because I don't know how to use my hands and feet, so I was just climbing with my ass. I did everything in my power, I got a small tattoo with a little cash I had and rummaged through trash to find worn but still usable accessories. It was a damn tough climb, but now I'm up here I'm starting to feel like I'd have been better off to just live as a rat. 
Here, a strict barking order is set up between members. It's nothing like the rats who move in close packs. Sometimes I do miss my old family. Oh, that's why I didn't read the Stray Dogs, because I didn't have uh, Gyeong Mi's page. I didn't get it from, um, from his fight. Yeah, all right, let's just, let's quickly refight this one. I'm going to use my favorite team. <laughs> hey, Knight. Welcome. Three to six. Boom, boom. This shouldn't take long. One of them hit hard. Two of them hit hard. I'm gonna murder them all now. I was gonna murder them all before, but now I really mean it. Still can't ink over. I can sharpen blade though. Very good, is it? Oh well, it's not gonna do much damage. Nice hit. Ooh. Nice hit. Two of them in one turn. Alright, so I need to kill Gyeongmi last. Shouldn't be a problem. I should uh, quite effectively control this convers the conversation. Really, combat is like a conversation. your risk brawl dice picking up uh risk brawl picking up one dice so often for the fun <laughs> i like living on the edge <laughs> i know i've heard that line used as a quest name in a game i'm playing what it's all over but the crying i don't know why i'm so obsessed with it i'm sorry if i sing if you if you feel i sing it too much um, I don't feel I sing it too much, but <laughs> I just I, I just find it so. Oh, conversation is a battle. Oh, okay. Um, what am I doing? Oh yeah, inking, inking things. I'm inking the shit out of things. Yeah. 
Come on, Larm. I mean, I know I'm barely playing Larm properly, but still, come on, Larm. I may be doing this too quickly. Now, I'm going to get three copies of Young Me anyway. So I'm, I'm guessing that I just got very unlucky on the draws for him. sitting out this one. Oof. 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 closest thing I can come up with is a very small quest chain in Maple Story for the Cyg Cygnus Knight class over in Edelstein. I r tried Maple Story once a very long time ago. there. No, okay, I was hoping that would make this move. It, it didn't. Finish it. Finish it. Wait for Hod to get angry. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> oh, God. Uh. All right. What have we got then? Oh, we got... Each of them got a new thing. A couple of muzzles and... Uh, Whatever that is, bandages. And I got four books of Gyang Mi. That's not bad. Blunt damage. I mean, there's no use, but there's no reason not to put it on. It's got extra speed as well. Restore one light at the end of a scene if the character did not use any pages. Well, that's not very good. All right. Where were we? Let's 
Some fools laugh at the accessories I'm wearing. They think I'm a glossy punk trying to look cool, figged out with random ornaments without a second thought. But what they don't know is that these ain't just for fashion. They're good for making arrogant idiots let their guard down. But before long, they're workshop products with real practical use. You heard about the people who use belts to choke others, didn't you? Those accessories, these accessories are similar to that. They're useful for beating someone to death. Though I gotta take the risk that comes with using them. Expensive gadgets crafted by premium workshops have almost zero side effects. On the other hand, this ring, for example, lets me deliver a harder blow with my punches, but it chafes the skin of my hand at the same time. This one's on me for using it for too long, and I hear quality products usually get regular repairs or maintenance. The side effects on my gear is pretty minor and negligible. But in worst cases, you get some poor sod whose neck got snapped by the necklace they're wearing. Well, I mean, that was totally worth fighting that, what, twice? Once? However many times I don't remember. Tattoos are the cleanest type of augment procedure you could get. I only got it because young me pushed me to give it a shot. I'm pretty satisfied with the result. It doesn't cost an awful lot and looks pretty damn nice too. Weak ass wimps run away at the side of my tattoo, but you see, coolness isn't the only notable feature of these tattoos. There's tons of tattoo types depending on the quality of the ink and material used, but generally speaking, you can have results like bursts of speed or skin as hard as steel. It used to be a singularity, but ever since the wing owning the tech got snapped and its patent expired, everyone and their mother has been using it. All oh, these tattooed mothers everywhere. Uh, don't get tattoos that are too cheap, though. You might wake up to fine melted flesh. Not yours, it just spawns there. Really weird. You get exactly what you pay for in this city. Bastards are only honest when money's involved. Uh, we're at the point where you can give most everyone some extra speed dice. I possibly could, yeah, with like the Young Mei. Uh, I mean, I'm not quite there. I was holding on to the Olga one for the next um, patron, because I definitely want the patrons to have the speed dice. So we'll see. Um, we'll see how many more I unlock before I get the next patron. Oh yeah, true, the uh, Kurakuma used those tattoos as well. I do love the variety and weirdness of city technology. I totally agree. It's very creative. And like, to be honest, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go on to a quick tangent. It's something, it, it's not something that I'm, I'm intentionally sort of, um, like, basing it on because I came up with it for the Far Waste before I even played Lobco. But in the Far Waste, the post-apocalyptic post-apocalyptic TTRPG that um, I'm making and that, that people on the Garen River Discord are helping with um, is a variety of options for player improvement. Because it's, it's sort of like this in that everybody is shit to begin with. You're all weak, flimsy humans and you're fighting things that are much, much, much stronger. So what do you do? And the answer is you find all sorts of ways to improve yourself. So in Far Waste, there's cybernetics, there's mutation, there's like just honing, which is just intense training. Um, I'm sure there was another one as well. I'm I'm also considering another one, but I might save it for um for an expansion. I need to get back to work on that. I've sort of fallen off that a bit because I was ill for a bit and I didn't have the the concentration to write, but now I'm beginning to feel better. I, I should. I should get back to that. I do want to put one of those out for this weekend, actually, so I should... May even have... I've, I've definitely scripted it. I can't remember if I recorded it. Anyway, sorry. Getting off trap. Getting off uh, topic. Uh, even if you make your way up the big leagues and become a decently influential syndicate, there's still loads of stronger gangs above you and they peck at you at the same time. No matter how far a syndicate climbs and tries, you just can't surpass the five fingers at the top. 
Syndicates aren't too different from fixers, is in what you have to repeat the same stupid shit following orders from above. So in my opinion, holding onto your place seems wiser than trying to climb up out of ambition or greed. Unless you're a rock bottom, of course. Someone's got to be below us serving as the punching bag, ain't that right? Uh, that's why if I do run a TTRPG in the PM verse, I'm going to try using Hero System. Uh, have you looked into the fan-made PM TTRPG? Because it seems really, really um, faithful. Like, the more I learn about this game, at this stage, because I've read into the rules of the, the PM TTRPG a bit, the more I read into this, it's like, oh, hang on, that's just like... Um, that. The, the mechanics in Library of Runa are just like the TTRPG, but of course it's the other way around. But uh, yeah, you should look into it. Um, fan made, so it's, it's free. Yeah. Every useful workshop technology is patented. The city strictly forbade making or selling products using technology patented by another workshop without purchasing the rights to it. If anyone infringes this regulation and still uses technology they shouldn't have access to, they will receive a cease and desist letter up to three times. When you receive the warning, you must pay all profit you've earned through the infringement to a corp. To a corp, as a fine. Why a corp, out of all places? Because that's the corporation they charge of maintaining and granting all patents. Is the head we're talking about. In any case, if you can't pay the penalty by the third warning, the claw will tear you down. To tell you the truth, yes, I'm the daughter of a small workshop owner. My father dreamed to make his little brand famous one day. His name was... Sorry, I don't feel like saying it out loud. It's long gone, so you'll get nothing even if you look for it. That's right. As I explained moments ago, if you can't spit out the money you illegitimately earn from manufacturing or selling products using stolen technology, punishment awaits. Wait, please listen to my story to the end. My father was a victim of fraud. His friend gave him a technology and asked him to make weapons for his office out of it, so he made them per his request. He didn't even realise the technology was stolen from someone else. He had already sent the weapons to the office, and when he was waiting for his friend to test the man and transfer the payment, a cease and desist letter was sent. You can guess the rest of the story. No. I'll come back to Olga. <clears throat> when an office accepts a request, an official deed of contract must be drawn up before the case can be dealt with. It sounds big, but it's basically just a mutual promise. I think it's consideration in legal terms. The client will pay a certain amount of money as a reward, and the fixers will do their best to resolve the case. They're plain and natural clauses for the most part. It seems people in the city are prone to breaking promises as simple as those without a contract to bind them, though. In any case, contracts serve as physical evidence to prove our performance and secure our payment when we submit reports to the association. Without a contract, there's no assurance that we'll score a record for our career or get our due payment. To give you an example, Big Sis resolved a huge case the other day, but we got absolutely nothing because she forgot to sign a contract for it. Requests made by wings are quite different from those assigned by the associations in general aspects. You'll be made the envy of everyone once you get a request from a wing. First of all, a wing commissioned a regular office indicates that the office has been recognised to be worthy of its trust, and that alone can be a significant achievement. You'll have something to brag about to the other fixers, and the payment is big as well. A single request from a wing resolved can keep us afloat for three months minimum. If I must be honest, however, I'm rather unnerved. As rewarding as work given by wings can be, there's significant risk associated with it. Imagine how dangerous and difficult this mission may be if our corp, a wing specialised in combat, requested us to resolve it for them. Big Sis happily accepted the job, though I still can't help but be a little bit worried. Still, I hope it goes well. <clears throat> Meow and I are old friends. I honestly don't remember how our first meeting went other than being backstreet buddies, but uh, that just goes to show how long our friendship's been, don't it? We've done requests together, been in life or death situations together, we've been too busy to contact each other often, 
ever since I moved to this office, but then Mio calls me for a date one day. Oh, she's so dreamy. Maybe it was because I, I got to drink with my old friend after a long while, or maybe it was the honour of having a seat with the famous captain of the rabbit team. But I was in a mighty good mood. I was taking swig after swig of booze. Rain would have scolded me for sure if I went home drunk as a broom. I felt that. But that happens all the time anyway, so I didn't care much. How's it going? So, so how about you? Same as you, lass. After some meaningless chatters, Mio grass like gasped like she'd remember something and started skimming through her fanny pack. Then she shot me a stealthy look. That's... That's, that's a deep cut for, for British people. <laughs> then she shot me a stealthy look. Pissed, Olga. No, I'm not pissed. I'm, I, I, I can handle it. Uh, come closer. We don't want anyone peeking at us, so stick it right to me. I mean, next to me. And stay quiet. You're the nosiest, noisiest one here and you already stick out like a sore thumb, so just say already. Well, you're not a woman of style, are you? It's more fun to talk like you're s we're secret agents exchanging confidential info when we're discussing topics like this. It's stylish that way. In that's that's interesting. That's really casual. That like Mio, who in Lobco was this really sort of look, just tell me the work type of person. But when she's with a friend, she's like, I want to be a spy. Forget it. Our corp has been investigating someone in late. It's are you giving work to our office, or are you just bragging? By the way, I guess it's pretty serious if our corp is paying attention to whatever it is, just how big is it? I've heard people going missing lately, does it have anything to do with that, or...? Uh, no, this is Olga recounting the conversation, that's why it's all said in her voice. Shut up and listen for a sec, you always have too much to say. Here's the deal, Olga. I've got a... Although I do reckon that Mia might be British. None of them have, like, British names. Olga isn't a British name, so Mio doesn't need to be a British name for her to also be British. So yeah, in my head, kind of Mio is now British. Shut up and listen for a sec. You always have so much to say. Is the deal, Olga. I've got a, a lush grassland to show you, so graze it to your heart's content and bring some of its veggies for me, as that sound. Some words she chose. It clicked me tongue, and I took a close look at the black card and warp train tickets Mio pushed to me side before drinking off my glass and agreeing to give it a go. I wouldn't have taken it if I'd known it'd bring us to this complete lunacy. Interesting that Mia also gave her the warp train tickets. That's interesting. Because, like, they only used the... They, they were planning to use the library invitation, but they only actually used it because the warp train got stuck. Did Mio know it was going to get stuck? Everyone is British in your head, except Rebecca, apparently. Uh, no, Ron, you're, you're very American. Ain't that right? Okay, I think I've read all of these. Alright, I'm going to take a break from reading. <clears throat> Hurting me throat. Hurting me throat, though, you know? Also, my voice has gone weird. Oh, I'm just going to take my headset off for a sec. <clears throat> uh. Sorry, I'm just. The left side of my head just feels really sort of bunged up. Oh yeah, um, I've turned down the game sound a bit, or rather I've turned down uh, the game sound on OBS. <clears throat> oh. So hopefully it's a better me to game ratio, I think it was the game was a bit high before. Uh, let me know what you think anyway. Right. <clears throat> oh god, I, I read too much. My, my voice has gone all croaky now. Alright, let's do the next one. 
Zvi and Distortion. Oh. Church of Gears. Salutations, everyone. Let us begin with today's worship session. It appears that we have a new worshipper. What concerns have brought you here to our oratory? I don't think I could continue living in this city anymore. It's too much for me. What could have overwhelmed you so much? Everything is so dreary and so is my life. I wake up at 6 in the morning, go to work by 8 and do the same work with the same face every single day. By the time I leave work, it's already 10 in the evening. I'm not sure what I'm doing anymore. I have so many expenses to cover every single month, I can't seem to get any richer. Everyone I see during my commute is the same face. Is this the guy who cuts his face off? Because there's, there's a lot of face... A lot of face talk. I don't see why we work, why we earn money, or why we live. I feel like I've lost my goal, my purpose. I mean, thematically, this does match the guy who cut off his face. He was just really sad, wasn't he? And then cut off his face and decided, yeah, this will make me happy. I'm just like a cogwheel. Yeah, I really am. I'm like a cog in the machine. Even if I were gone, the city would find another cog to replace me. What am I? Where, where, where does my worth lie? I understand that feeling. Everyone in the city is like a gear spinning along without a purpose. Staying in the middle of it wears you out, slowly. You're right! I really feel like that. However, is it necessarily a bad thing to be a gear? Huh? All problems stem from the refusal to admit to the fact that we are indeed gears ourselves. I did too once. After my father passed away, I lost my way for a while. You see, my father lived his life akin to a gear wheel. He'd always wake at the same hour, go to the same place, and come home at the same time with the same face. My father did research on gears. His goal was to solve the same type of problems you're going through. Perhaps he unknowingly grew to resemble the single object he studied for so long. The wrinkles on his forehead deepened as he worked. They resembled the teeth of a gear. My father worked out his whole life as a rusted gear of the city until he was murdered by someone else. Oh. Then one day I came across a thought. Maybe we really are gears that constitute this city. Maybe our suffering comes from trying to deny our own identity. But that kind of life is pointless. I'm tired of being a purposeless cog that keeps running day by day. Exactly. The problem is you see yourself as an aimless gear. You mean gears can have a purpose? Yes, of course they can. All we need to do is find the purpose we were born to mesh with. You shall become a unique gear that cannot be replaced by any other. We are all gears. We are simply so many gears in this world wallowing in sadness for those who have yet to know where and how to be. That's... It's still hard to believe that. Take a look at all the people gathered here. Do they have the same face as the one you've seen in your everyday life? No, they all look happy. Please, trust in me. Yes, this is the only way I have... Now come here, I will give you the purpose in life you're looking for. Yeah, this... I'm... I feel like she's going to just, like, unfold and just envelop him. Oh no, no, he's just getting his head geared up. So I'm guessing body horror is the content warning. Do I sit in this chair? Yes, take a seat and relax. 
This chair will tell you what kind of gear you are. Is this really safe? Of course it is. Oh my, you turned out to be a thought gear. A thought gear? It is exceedingly rare for one to be bestowed with the purpose of a thought gear, you see. They are helping me even now. For your information, my father was also a thought gear. That means those gears on the back of your head are... This one was my... F this one is my father! <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Besides meat gear. Mm. Meat gears need to keep company with at least one thought gear. Well, wait, am I really going to turn into a gear? The pain is only temporary. It will soon be followed with pure fulfillment. Everyone, let us welcome the honourable and invaluable arrival of a new thought gear. Wait, wait! I didn't know this would happen. As the gears turn, so too does life fulfill its cycle. So that's Elin. I read that as cute. Cute leader of the Church of Gears. <sighs> nah, I've seen all kinds of gears in my life, but Thark is a new to me. This must be the rumoured ritual of theirs. They get smart by plugging gears into the back of their heads, apparently. I've already forgotten his voice. That's a load of horseshit. Alright, let's see. Director Yujin from the Shi Association asked us to kill ten worshippers of the cult, neutralize its leader, and secure her. I didn't quite expect the director of Shi Association Section 2 to personally give our office a request. Something strange might be up. I like his coat. How long are we going to sit and watch that? Can't we start shooting now? There are guns, Ranta. He's got to be American. Wait for Masan. Ah, oh, what a beautiful thought gear you have become. I will give you the honor of accompanying me. I mean, that will, that's, to be honest, this is not too body horror-y. Like, it's a conceptual horror rather than a you're about to watch somebody you're about to watch somebody literally become a gear. What I was expecting when that thing was on his head, I was expecting it to be like, his brain is going to be replaced with a gear and he's just going to be a face with a gear behind it. That would have been fucked up. Soon you'll understand how happy it is to be a gear with a purpose. Yes, it may take some time to adjust. Let us start with turning bit by bit. Good. Along with the others, gently rotate one cycle at a time. My father would gladly help you out. When she said he got murdered by somebody else, did she do it? <laughs> <laughs> See, it does make you feel happy, doesn't it? I'm very glad to know you are happy. My dear followers, today another lost gear has found its way to happiness. Praise be to Father. Praise be. Huh? What do you mean, be careful? Now. What? What's going on? The gears, the poor gears. Please don't do this. Whoever you are, please leave us alone. We're only murdering a few people. We simply want to live a happy life following our destined purposes. God, why is this slippery leader so hard to hit? 
She doesn't seem to be dodging the bullets with her own reflexes. This is if someone else is predicting the trajectories for her. Those thought gears on her head are spinning like crazy. Damn it. Oh, full stop fixer. This sucks. We paid an arm and a leg for these bullets. Tamaki. Then we can read the movement pattern of those gears. Can do. Grazed her shoulder. Now I'll finish her off. The blue reverberation Argalia. I know that this is an important character because they're a Steam card. So uh I need a good voice for him. Um A bullet crafted by Atelier Logic. Why, those are some expensive bullets you have there, don't you, friends? The Blue Reverberation! It's a terrible name. You are... Ah, oh, could you be the person my father always talked about? Hmm, I guess. Say, I need you right no, now. Would you like to come so. with me? <laughs> yes, of course. I've been waiting for you my whole life. A perfect fit with the gear that is me. Why, thank you. No, you don't. But first, these friends need some attention. Pluto, could you look after Eileen in the meantime? Run! the hell is going on? What would the blue reverberation be doing here? No idea. God damn. It looks like he's trying to kill us. If we screw this job up, we're going to be bankrupt from the bullets we wasted. We literally just saw the blue reverberation deflect our bullets. We're no match for him in any way. Forget about anything else. We should run away and survive for now. We're almost to the exit. Hiya, friends. Who could have made such an adorable little request, I wonder? Ah, hell, to the left! Ah, you're not getting anywhere with your sluggish feet, don't you see? He's carrying a massive blade. Like a scythe. Unless a lifeline were to come down from the heavens, that is, no? Damn it, we should drop our guns. Are you nuts? These were hella expensive. We'd never thrown them away. But we can't hide forever either. Li Wei, this is... What's that, an invitation? From the library or whatever, heard that the Hana designated it as an urban plague now. Ah, oh, look at you all clustered together in the corner. You're like a flock of cute little chicks gathered around in the cold. Blue reverberation, we apologize if we interrupt your business. We promise to forget about anything we've seen and heard here, so could you let us maybe go, please? Thank you. What? <laughs> okay, under one condition, could you tell me who gave you this request? Uh, I'll give you ten seconds. Nine. Gal, whatevs, Li Wei, do something with that invitation thing. Six. Anyone got a pen? We need some of the rad of paper with. Oh, you can use mine. Take your time now. Four. Crazy bastard. Quick, sign your names here. Three. Now the real show is only beginning. Wouldn't you agree? Fucking what? Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh. 
but of course. <laughs> What's that? Oh, uh, when you're talking to a, a blue person with a scythe, and then suddenly they turn to their skeleton friend. <laughs> oh my god. The Blue Reverberation. That name sounds similar to the Red Mist. You got that right. Both of them are top grade fixes that received a colour from the Hanna Association. Really? Really? Okay. That's a bit weird. I thought she was called the Red Mist because she turns people into a Red Mist. You know, a practical reason. Alright, sure. Feels a little bit reverse engineered, but okay, I'll go with it. They're a cut above grade one. It's curious that such a capable fixer showed up so early. There are loads of nutcases among fixers, but the blue reverberation is on a whole nother level. He's a certified lunatic. Is he famous? Oh, he is. He's certainly got skills, even if he's bonkers. It does appear to be skills, seeing how he blocked those gunshots. That's why guns aren't used too often. They're not very effective against actually competent opponents. So it's much easier to dodge a bullet than a uh, sword, obviously. Now that you mention it, the majority of guests we've had so far didn't carry firearms. Is there any other reason guns aren't used? It's the cost. They're awfully expensive. Like in that hit game, Ark Knights. It's just not worth worth it most of the time. Guns are pricey on their own, but bullets are plain ridiculous, like those poor folks said. Manufacturing bullets must be quite costly. And that's true, of course. The biggest factor, though, is that uh, the, the tax the head levied on firearms. It depends on the gun, but two full magazines worth of bullets cost about the same as a decent gun. Heck, giving your entire office crew augmentation procedures is probably cheaper than keeping enough bullets in stock for them to use. The cost is so high it outweighs the benefit by a metric ton, and it's hard to find a workshop that treats guns or bullets. What's more, workshops aren't even allowed to craft those without a firearms manufacturing license, which is apparently very tricky to get. What do you think is the reason firearms are made so inaccessible? This is just my hunch, but I think they don't want killings to happen too easily. <laughs> what? Oh, we don't want people to kill too easily. So, you know, we'll just make sure that people can turn humans into silk by eating them, or have chainsaws carried that are five foot long, or um, able to punch someone to death by wearing a special ring. You know, but as long as it's not too easy. What? Killing what? People in general. I didn't expect the rulers of this city to be humanitarians. Ah. No, not because the head of the city value human life or anything, obviously. It seems that they have this weird uh, philosophy that the process of a human killing another shouldn't be trivial or insignificant. That doesn't really track with anything we've seen so far. How funny. Death can be pretty and plenty insignificant even without guns. I mean, uh, I, I get what they're going for. The idea, and I, I don't, like... I don't disagree with the concept of it. A gun is a lot less personal because, like, if you... I mean, all right, disclaimer, don't kill people. If you kill someone with a sword, then the weapon you... The, the actual thing that kills them is the thing that you are going to be carrying around and using for a long time afterwards. If you kill someone with a gun, the bullet that kills them, you're never going to see or think about again. So, like, there is a there is a distinct difference. I do see what they're going for. Um, I think the way they've described it doesn't really convey that, but I was halfway there already, so I understand what they're going for. Well, you aren't wrong there. Phew, he's not following us all the way here. This is if some omniscient person is toying with us. The blue reverberation seemed like he knew everything. 
They should be thankful we survived him somehow. <sighs> Don't get too nervous, Stefan. How can I not be nervous? We ended up in the library we know almost nothing about. You know we're almost out of bullets, right? What was the point of running away from the Blue Reaver <laughs> if we're going to die here anyway? Then we should try to at least die a little bit later, obviously. Humans all die eventually. There's little use in delaying the inevitable. So just throw yourself off a bridge, you sour git. See, he's got a point. No, he hasn't. Don't worry, I'll work it out. <clears throat> Greetings, dear guests. Hello and welcome. I'm Stefan, soon to be dead and shelved in your bookcases. You don't quite appear to be spirited, dear guest. It's ultimately up to you whether you'll become a book or return triumphantly with the ones you need. Yeah, thanks for the kind words. You're ruining our mood. Don't mind him, we're in a bit of a hurry right now. I got a bridge to throw myself off. Call him my name. Bikrim, sorry. <laughs> we'll just take care of business here and go back. I understand various guests visit here on, with their own reasons and purpose. There have been much more impolite guests, so please do not worry about your attitude. I'm getting a bad feeling about this lady. She seems as eerie as the blue reverb. Maybe just dying to the blue reverb was a better idea than this. Tweet, tweet, tweet. What are you, a parrot? Get inside already. Get inside? I thought they were inside. I thought the idea was they appeared, like, inside the lobby or whatever. Fine, hothead. May you find your book in this place. I'm gonna be honest, Tamaki is very generic looking. Uh, Stefan reminds me of, um, what's the name, Hitch from Attack on Titan, just the hair. And Li Wei also reminds me of some, these are very generic looking people in general. Thirty percent chance to boot blunt, boost blunt damage by one, gain plus one power for the first scene. Thirty percent chance, gain two power for the per first scene. Oh wow! Thirty percent chance to boost offensive dice, gain three power for the first scene. Jeez. <laughs> Tamaki's defining feature is being one hundred and forty centimeters tall. That's so adorable. Right. Hey, look, Nathan. Nathan's shorter. <laughs> Imagine if someone arrives and it's like, Hey, my most defining trait is, Hey, why, how are you shorter than me? All right, let's see what we got. Single use. Because they're bullets. Interesting. Feeble. Offensive dice lose power. Bleed. Remove from play until the end of the act. Holy crap, all of these are single use. So yeah, the, they're intended, these are a very, like, um, uh, quick burn things, which is why they get the, the plus power. Fragile, take additional damage. Fucking what? 6 to 20! Holy crap! Okay. Well, stabby, not stabby, and blunt. Po 
boom headshot card. <laughs> I hate CQC, which is close quarter combat. <laughs> That's a funny name. Alright. Cool. We get one floor. Yeah, that makes sense. It should be stabby or blunty. Remember, Luca, advise or ask. Please don't tell. So I don't want to use stabby because Netzach is needs updating. So let's go with blunty. What are their roles? One to five. So yeah, we could probably outspeed them. So I'm going with Stabby because Leeway is, is weak to Pierce. And Stefan is weak to... to. Sorry, why am I looking at Pierce? No, uh, Blunt. Because he's weak to, to Blunt. And she's weak to Blunt. So that's the plan. and blunt them. Oh! Oh! Ranged weapons! Right! The mo uh, Melee is the more common type. When a melee page clashes against a ranged type, its offensive dice cannot damage it immediately, even if they win the clash. Okay. So, basically, we clash, and if a melee wins... I don't quite know what that means. Ranged icons will always be played before melee regardless of speed. Less common combat pages that perform attack at a distance. Even if the offensive dice loses, the ranged attack will take no immediate damage. The opponent's melee dice will be retained and moved to the end of their dice queue for reuse. I don't know what that means. My best guess is that when it's used, like, it'll... I don't know, I can't can't phrase it. I, I think I get it, but we'll see. It's good to be careful, but you shouldn't hesitate when you take the shot. I won't miss, I'll chase you down swiftly. Here goes another frightful fight. I will never die. If you successfully parry the bullet, you can reuse the dice as it goes to the end of the queue. I, I, just, I don't know what that means. Reuse the dice? As in, does it then just become... Does it just then become um, a one-sided thing? So basically, if you survive the shot, that's you dodging it as you're charging forward, and then it's just one-sided. Yeah, I'll turn quick mode off. It's a good idea. Right, let's see how this works then. He's going to shoot me for 2-6 and 2-6. What can you do back? 3-6, three, 3-5. Three, yeah, brawl him then. 6 to frickin' 20. 6 to 20. It gets put back on the list. That's still it's, it's not it's not coming across, guys. I'll find out through through playing. <laughs> it's just, I'm guessing yeah, it's not something that can be cleanly explained in in. If you have three, no, I'm I'm not going to bother trying to understand it from the chat. Sorry, guys. It's the tutorials in this game just cannot get conveyed through the chat. Right, how are we doing? Uh, two to six, two to six, three to eight. Damn, I need to improve my blunts because these aren't very good.
All right. So he rolled a seven. No, that's his... Shit, that's his speed? No, that was a seven. He rolled a five? I don't know what's happening. He rolled a seven and then he rolled a five. She rolled a six. Sorry, he, he rolled a six. And I also rolled a six, so I've deflected the bullet. And then I got shot. Ah, uh, 19. Alright, well that reduced it by 3. Okay, that didn't really help. Let's go metallic ringing for calling him. Yeah, they have way more power on the first scene, so they should be just a lot weaker now. But they almost murdered us in one round. They almost staggered two of us. Alright. Uh, three to seven, three to seven, melee. Alright, so this is just a normal one, basically. Three to seven, three to seven. I'll intercept that one. So take the shot. Range Intercept that one. I'll right, we'll go with that, so that should dodge it. I like how you have electric shock on Ryan since that's his class element in his source material. Ah, oh, cool. It was another one of those ones where it's while well, like I've got a spare one, I've got nothing else to put here, so. Alright, I'm gonna go for her because she's ah oh, no, she's the one I I want the most because she's the best one, but she was the hardest one. Mm. I'll hold on to my cards, I think. He doesn't have a thing, does he? No, he doesn't. Okay. Alright, four, seven, six, two. Six. I'm just trying to understand how this works with what is said. Because that one there. Oh, yeah. Hang on. What's this? This is a range one. So this is a dodge, an attack, and a, d and a block. He got shot. So this one deflected it and hit back. And then he gets to do his hit. Alright, so if you deflect it, if you if you deflect with an offensive dice, um, then you can stop the damage and then you get to make an unopposed strike at the end with it. That's my understanding. It still boils down to bigger number wins, yeah. I think the the thing with it is that they're they are big numbers because they have that issue of 
you could just get hit unopposed. Then again, that's sort of how it is anyway. It seems a weird distinction, because that's sort of how offensive dice work anyway. Offensive dice are the offensive dice. The higher one does full damage. You know, it doesn't reduce damage, because I think that's what... I don't know if that's what counter is. I don't know. I don't want you to write a detailed description, thank you, but no thank you. <laughs> I, as we've learned with this, I learn so much better by doing it. People telling me how it works, it does not come across, so I'm going to have to learn the hard way. I appreciate the attempt, but no thank you. Alright, if I go for this one and put it on your sword. A single, multi a single melee dice can deflect multiple ranged dice. I have not seen that in effect. Alright, I'll see if I can try that then with uh, Destructive Impact. That's a ranged, and that's a ranged. Which one do I want to block? They're both bad. <laughs> Alright, I'll block that one, and I'll intercept this one. 2 to 7. Ah, I think I'm just better off blocking both of those, frankly. Yeah, he's gonna get staggered. I'll just try that. I don't think it's gonna help, but I'll try it. And then I'll hit you with that to try and take that out. Alright, so 2 to 6, 1 to 10. Somehow that deflected it. And then hits unopposed. Bizarre attack. Dodged. Ah! Okay. That may have just clicked something for me. I did redirect the dice away from destructive impact. I realised that as it was happening. Yeah, you're staggered. I knew that would happen. Alright, so... I saw that. Can I see his deck? I can't. Um, the one... The, the one that deals stagger is a dodge and then a strike. But he, the dodge works against everything. So, my understanding is that the first dice when... Uh, when you're using a melee versus a ranged, the first dice on the melee has to combat everything from the ranged. Because that is you running forward. That is you charging through it, and it's how good your moves are to dodge or deflect. And then, assuming uh, you, you, get to, you get through it, then you can hit them after that. Which is why a high single dice works against ranged, because then that high single dice allows you to have a high dice against all of their attacks, and then strike. And it is probably designed this way, because high single dice aren't very useful against lots of low attacks uh, at, at melee, but they work much better against ranged. Okay. I think I've got it. I could be wrong, but I think I understand. Sharpen blade. Kinda. Fucking hell. <laughs> hey, hey, uh, Strin? Apologies if I'm saying that wrong. It goes through all the dice on the page like a list. Isn't that what I just said? Is that is that was I? All right. Uh, let's see. So that'll go up to um, three to five, which is not enough. I will right, we'll go with that one because that's a, a nice high starting number. Actually, 
let's let's test it with this. So let's go with destructive impact against her. So that'll intercept. And it should just completely annihilate everything and then hit her. If I've understood that. I also need to intercept this one because otherwise Collinium's gonna get fucked up. Ugh. Sorry, the more you guys try to explain to the chat, I know I, I, I'm sort of interacting with that bit, but the more I tr you guys try and explain, the less sense it makes to me. Alright, we'll go with this. I'm gonna... Oh, I don't really want to ignore him. Alright, yeah, I'm gonna have to go for him. At this point, I think we should stop trying to explain. Yeah, it's just it's just confusing me, I think. I I really do understand this stuff much better by doing it. Ah, so I have to re-roll that every time. I'm just gonna put quick mode on because I'm not <laughs> I'm not learning from this. All right, I think I understand it better. Like I don't I don't want to come across as um ungrateful. I really appreciate that you guys are trying to help. It just it's not the kind of learning that helps me. Oof. How many cards do they have left? 4 3 fucking now they've got tons left. They're murdering us. All right, shocking blow. Five to eleven. Last chance, I think. There. He needs a draw card, doesn't he? Nice, nice. Good work. Bad work. Bad work. Yeah, your sword's fucked. <laughs> oh, damn. I can intercept one of them. One, two, eight. I mean, this is a much more powerful build than I was expecting there one. Like, I saw all their single-use cards, and it's like, oh, they're not going to be able to last at all. But because they're playing one a turn, that means I've got to survive nine rounds. Or up to nine rounds, I guess. I, can't, I don't know how many cards they actually had, because they can have less. Or fewer, rather. can intercept that one. Yeah, intercept that with the scratch that I need to kill him. Not quite enough. Nice. Bye you sod. Bye you sod. Slower speed. That's pretty tempting. Maximum light. See, I want to give that to Yasod, but he's really not looking healthy. <laughs> That's actually tempting. I normally don't like that one because I prefer to control it, but because they're ranged weapons for the most part, I can, um, I can counter. Yeah, I'll go with this one. 
and I'll give it to Ryan. I see he's currently my best fighter. And he is fighting someone with slower speed. By one. One to eight. Good defense. I mean, their emotional level is really high. If I can beat them, and it's... I, I'm quietly confident. I'm going to scratch it. And just kill him. Nice. One down. That damn blue asshole screwed us all up. What's gonna happen now? If only I sniped more carefully. Oh shit, we took out two of them in one turn. Ryan's your best fighter, that's worrying. He's my best fighter in the room. Because the others got shot. <laughs> uh, things Garen tends to say moments before disaster. Or victory, in this case. All right, let's have you intercept. Yeah, I think we got this now. Why head? Why did he in did he intercept? He shouldn't have intercepted. Whatever. It's all over for you now. And your sword is gonna bizarre attack you. There we are. Oh, that was hard. That was really hard. Mostly because I was... I, I still don't really understand the range mechanics I sort of do but I I also don't like I couldn't I couldn't explain them because I don't really yeah I appreciate the attempt though guys two book of Stefan th uh, three book of Stefan total four of leeway three of Tamaki and one of full stop office I mean your sod isn't my best team so I just didn't want to use hard again. That Stefan fellow turned into a book just as he expected. It's kind of sorry to see him keep railing at the world till the end. Do you think it's wrong to blame the world? Oh no, nothing wrong with that. It's like I think he was weak-willed for putting the blame on this world for his misery. What an asshole. Uh, just I pity myself for living in that world. I'm sorry I keep trying to not to fault this world. I curse this world. Same, to be honest. Same, TBH. Ah, you and me, we're, we're the same, Angela. I could explain if I had a diagram. Oh god, I can't even. can't even imagine trying to read a diagram of how that bloody works. Anyway, how are we doing on time? We're doing alright. Let's burn some books, not that one. There. I'm going to have to redo that fight. Yeah. <laughs> I only got one of them. Can only use ranged. Interesting. Because otherwise it would be too powerful. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Well, I got some ranged ones. I might try building a ranged person in uh, Netzax 1 because it's Pierce. Uh, Alright, quick question I will ask here. I am definitely going to need to refight that. Should I refight that off stream? Because I'm, I'm going to be rebuilding some decks off stream. Should I refight things so that I have sort of the most I can so that you guys get to see new things? 
and so or do you want to see me re-going through those fights to see how like what how i'm learning it and, and how i'm getting on with stuff up to you guys let me know in the comments Range pages can't be used with melee builds. True. Lucas says off stream. Laurent says completely up to you. You can learn more about range combat. Off stream sounds like a good idea. All right then. Because yeah, like the completionist part of me is like I need to redo that fight like three or four times to get all the pages because you get so few from each one. I got like two books from each, which is nothing. Plus, I need to redo that uh, that other fight. I'm going to make another note of this. What was the other fight I needed to redo? Was it that one? Was it the workshop fight? It was, wasn't it? Yeah, Li Wei had a mix of ranged and uh, melee. Actually, that's... A oh, I can't check their key pages because I didn't get any. <laughs> um, so what's this called? Full stop. It was the Gambler. What was the Gambler general reception? Was it this one? Sorry. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna write this one down as well. I'm gonna get into the habit of uh, the one with three. Oh no, no, I'm not gonna do that one off stream. I'm talking about stuff to do off stream that I need to do to farm cards because I didn't get enough. And I think it was the uh, the G can. I didn't get enough G can. So I need to redo this fight. Yeah, I'm talking about uh, ones off stream for me to farm. Okay. Let's have a look at this one. I don't know that I'm going to be able to do it because I need to do some upgrading. But we'll give it a go. I mean, if I lose, I'm going to have to refight that one anyway. So if I lose this one... I'm probably going to call it a day for the stream because I'm going to have to do some stuff off, off cam. But we will give it a go. Oh, that's a worrying sound. What the fuck? Ah, oh, today's performance isn't going too well. Oink, you've got to keep the beat. District 9 is a sacred ground for music. It is the homeland of the pianist. Come on, man. I'm doing my best here. Are you still bothered by what he has said? Of course I am. This might be our last performance ever if we go to the library. Just shake off all your worries with the exciting music. Oink, if you keep getting distracted by petty concerns like that and half ass your part, I'm going to use you as my instrument. Seconded. Well, that is quite a look. There's a lot going on there. Uh, we can't let little thoughts disturb our performance already. You guys are still new, so you have no idea the troubles we had to go through to perform back in the day. Me, Doodle Do, Woof and Hee Haw formed this band and devoted all our time to music so we could recreate the beautiful, beautiful performance we listened to on that fateful day. So quit gawking and concentrate on the music. The pianist's performance, yes, I know. 
I left the Seven Association Section 3 and joined this band because I just couldn't forget that sweet melody. I wanted to make music like that myself, even if it meant I have to give up everything I had. Oh, yes. Yeah, uh, Pierre did mention them, of course. The Bremen. Yeah, remember the enchanting tune that echoed through the whole city? Wow. That is quite a shot. That grand and majestic piano made out of 100,000 people. <clears throat> the lovely sound created from every stroke of the tendons. It made me realize how beautiful the sounds a human can make in the hands of the right performer. No comment. Especially the ensemble with fixes at the finale. At the end of that intense concerto, concerto, the fixes became one with the piano and assimilated into the music. How I wish I could have been there. Ahem, speaking as someone who watched the performance right at the scene, the finale was so wonderful, you know? The musical score and notes literally unraveled before my eyes. The fixes ran across the score and charged at the pianist. They were buried under the notes one by one, their bodies blowing up. But they couldn't die there, they became part of the piano spewing out fragrant notes. And the last fixer standing was taken apart carefully, making the most splendid sound imaginable as gorgeous red notes scattered from their body. Yes, that performance, the heavenly music that pierced me. Well, but then the black silence intervened and cut off the pianist's hands and head. Total mood killer. I wanted to be part of that performance, too. I'm sorry, I'm so jealous. I had to sit in my office and listen to the music coming from a distance. Boo-hoo, I want to do it too. I want to make music that's half as good as the pianist. But look at me, no matter how much I smash the ankle bones, pluck the tender off. Oh, okay. ah. Pluck the tendons and scrape flesh from the splint bones of my instruments, I can't even get close to it. And hear horrid doodle do said things. No, oink, there's no need to be impatient. It's true that we still have a long way to go before we can perform like the pianist did. But we're getting close, you see. If we pour our heart and soul into our performance every day, we'll be able to make it one day. The performance by Doodle Doo, Hee Haw and Woof was wonderful, wasn't it? Yeah, the three gave a fantastic performance. They went on a trip to prepare for the next, so we won't get to hear it again for a while, though. It was, will I get to perform like that someday? Of course. Let's discuss this again after we finish this performance and handle the library job Hiho gave us. She said there's going to be a performance bigger than ever. And we might find new instruments in the library, you know? Yeah, I'm excited to see the performance Hiho mentioned. Let me see. Aha! Why don't we perform in a supermarket next time? Oink likes supermarkets, right? I'm in too. It's fun to mess around with all kinds of instruments in supermarkets. <laughs> Thanks, Meow. Thanks, Mumu. I love you. You're my best friends in the world. I'll practice harder. Alright, gear up, everyone. She has a katana as well. Fucking hell. Wow, they've put so much into that one character design. <laughs> Looks like the pianist left a whole bunch of nutjobs in his wake. From break and ruin, the most beautiful performance begins. What, are you interested in listening to the pianist's music? No way, I've heard that kind of music more than enough times. You know, at one point he just left it on repeat while the orchestra was playing. It just kept going on and on, and that piercing sound in the second... What's it called? Second, second wave, second, third wave, whatever it's called. The act. What was it called? The thing with the. Oh, it's, it's on the tip of my brain. The term for the different parts of nor like a, a performance. 
Trump? No, not the trumpet. Uh, no, there's like movement, movement. Thank you. It's called. They're called movements. Yes. I've sort of spoiled what I was joking about. But yes, it's a joke about how Angela kept having to hear that because I put it on repeat. Check out my Lobco series if you haven't seen it already. I had the orchestra. That was fun. <clears throat> anyway. There was another dotty musician like the pianist. It's similar, but not exactly the same. How about you? Did you hear the pianist music yourself? Duh, it'd be a lot faster to count the people in the city who didn't hear that damn sound. This music didn't just pierce me, it almost ravaged my whole being. And then, never mind, I don't want to remember that performance again. Because your, uh, because your wife and unborn child died horribly, yes, because of that. Anyway, musicians are all molto vi vive <coughs> molto vives in the head, one way or another. They seem to love performance that leads to doom, indeed. Guess they're living in their own world that no one can understand. Cat goes. <laughs> Oh my god. Pig goes. <laughs> Rabbit goes. <laughs> squeak, squeak. This is so sad. Greetings, dear guests. I am the direct. Momo, don't be so down. But rabbits don't have any signature cry sounds. Then we can make one. Good idea. Everyone. What a load of nonsense. Why are you just standing there, bluey hair? Aren't you going to let us in? Stupid little machine. Don't keep your guests waiting. What? What did you... Wow. Okay. Look at its stumble. It's got red blood too. It can bleed, but the inside is a bunch of metallic junk. Not a good vibe. Wow. That is is quite an evocative look. Hurry up and let us in before we break your legs. That was fascinating. I mean, these are a reference to um, Hotline Miami, right? <laughs> Like with the neon and the animal masks, that's the whole I'm Miami reference, it's gotta be. Speed. Endured Pierce. Meow meow, at the start of the act to give one strength to two random allies. After a successful blunt attack, inflict one fragile to a random enemy. Cool. Squeak, squeak. After a successful blunt attack, deal want to do bonus damage to a target. And inflict one fragile. Well, someone in uh, his Collinium is probably getting some Moo Moo after this. Give... One feeble to two random enemies after a successful blunt attack, blah blah blah. Three to seven, two to six. Okay, that one's not fantastic, but that ability is pretty good. That ability. Oh wow, looks the um, pianist. Okay. That doesn't seem that hard. Mm, 
Okay. So they've got a lot of strength, a lot of feeble, and some regen. I'm going to bleed them. Are we ready for this? Because I am quietly confident. That thing that I say. Alright, let's go. I didn't check their resistances. Booger. Moo moo and meow cheered me up. I can do it. Hey, we're being met with pretty passionate cheers. Ready when you are. Okay, time for a bit of creative exercise. Uh, what are their resistances? They're weak to slash. Hang on. Weak to slash. Weak to nothing. And weak to slash. So yes, this was a good pick. <clears throat> All right. Uh, 1 to 5 and 1 to 4. Give strength to one random ally. Increase the uh, power of offensive dice. So he doesn't have that, so he's just 1 to 5 and 1 to 4. Uh, the two are going for that one, so I'll have to intercept one of those. One to five, three to eight, and three to f seven. That is pretty. Restore two light on use. Bloody hell. Okay. That's pretty, that's pretty powerful. Let's go for defense on that one. Incept it. Three to five, two to three, two to six. I'm inclined to just hit back. Oh, hang on. They've got strength as well. So that's actually four to nine. Yeah, that's still a good choice. And that's f uh, four to six. Yeah, that's still not not a bad one. This one, uh, four to eight. Oh, my strength is debuffed. I didn't see that. But yeah, I'm I'm fairly okay with this one. Oof. Oof. That did not go as well as I expected it to. They start off with some high light. Oh no, it's because they've got this. I think. Oh no, they're all on emotional level one. Yeah, no, that's right. Sorry, I'm confusing myself. Don't worry. Fragile. Okay. But none of them are buffed. Three to five. And I can ink. Although I don't want to ink there. All right, I'll actually do that, and then ink. Let's go with that one. Ooh, five to eighteen. Yikes. I'm gonna have to brawl. I can't brawl. No! Well, damn. No, I 
I'm gonna have Hod intercept that one. Okay. What? Hod was supposed to intercept that one. I don't know why Hod didn't intercept that. It said clash. I don't know. I don't know what that was. That was weird. Still, they're on the verge of... All three of them are on the verge of staggering and they're all bleeding. Okay, they're focusing their attacks. Uh... I need to draw, so I need to use that one. Mm. Yeah, ink over that. Two to eight. Yeah, that's not bad. And ball. Oof. Don't stagger. Oh, he's just not staggered, but he's staggered now. Whoa! Meow's down. Whoa! Hod is a beast. Okay. That happened quick. I didn't intend to take out Meow. We won't be able to perform together anymore. Ah, uh, this is it, the exact sound I've been looking for. That's the sound you guys heard it too, the melody that penetrates me. They're messed up, these guys. <laughs> uh... Hit, hit them with everything. Wait for Hod to get angry. Staggered. There we go. Hod defeated all three. Are you proud of me, guys? Are you proud of me? You're proud of me. This fight is a good one to revisit off screen. Good cards and pages. I can't. Be I am actually surprised that I won that. I mean, the emotional level is much lower than I anticipated. I do indeed feel proud. Like I said, I'm surprised. <laughs> but are you proud, Luca? Well, oh, look at her. What in the... Angela, what's going on? That's blood. I thought you were a pure machine. I am surprised as well. That much impact shouldn't have made me flinch either. Oh. Oh, okay. Theories just popped into my head. You all right? Does it hurt bad? I'm still fine. Now I see how much it hurts to get hit. Could it be that you're getting close to being human? It may be one of the signs I'm approaching my freedom. There's no need to be worried just yet. We know that this place is built on self-actualization. That has been outright stated that that is their singularity, which is presumably still here, still powering um, the library. That's why it's it is a library all of a sudden. So, the fact that she is bonding with Roland, showing more of this humanity that she's never ever been able to show before because she had to f to follow her programming, means that she is self-actualizing into a human. Interesting. I have a concern though. 
So um, this has spoilers for Bioshock Infinite. So um, my mouse is up here. Uh, in case you don't want spoilers, I will move my mouse to the bottom of the screen when I stop talking about Bioshock Infinite spoilers. Okay. So if you want to mute, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. At the end of Bioshock Infinite, uh, Elizabeth has attained um, godlike power. She has the ability to reshape basically the entirety of creation at her whim. Uh, then in the DLC, the specifically the second DLC, she gives up that power. And it's not... I don't think it's ever properly explained how or why. She did it so that she could save one little girl and then at the end of the DLC she dies. And it's like she gave up her godlike power and then like literally two days later dies. And it's like but you have just how why how did she, why and how did she give up this godlike power to change reality on a whim? Like it, to save one girl in one reality, she's established an almost nihilistic approach to, to reality, so why would she do that? But also, why would you introduce this godlike character only to immediately take away their power and kill them? So my concern here is that they're going to make... It, like, Angela has, has this whole time has been like, literally nothing can hurt me. I am, like, I have godlike power of this area. <laughs> Click time stops click i've taken away your limbs click i've given them back i'm concerned that they're going to humanize her to the point where she doesn't have this godlike power which is presumably granted to her by the library and i'm worried that they're just gonna if not kill her off sort of new to her to the point where she is not any kind of entity in this world or important character in this world that's my concern because i love powerful characters i love when powerful characters are made integral and important and useful um stuff like one punch man and um my hero academia and stuff like that i love overpowered protagonists if they're done well but a lot of people tend to have an overpowered character or protagonist and then go, hmm, how do we make this interesting? I know, take away all their powers and, and, or, and or kill them. So I'm really concerned. But yeah. Okay. Spoilers for Bioshock Infinite are over. Um, so yeah. Um, I I basically just outline my concerns using an example from Bioshock Infinite. So, uh, all right. Well, I think this was a really successful stream. We made a load of progress. We beat some new things. Oh, let's quickly burn these new things we got. I didn't get much. I really hope I get a meow page. I wonder who I will dress up as as meow. I did not get a meow page. Damn, you guys don't get to see me dress someone up as meow. But I got a load of really cool things. So. Right. I don't know what that means, Ranta. I don't know what AO means. <laughs> you keep using it and I don't know what it means. I can get it from context, but still. Uh, all right. We didn't lose it all today. That's pretty cool. I suppose we didn't. All right. Uh, before... Sorry, I keep saying all right. I don't want to make that a thing I say regularly. Before next stream, what I will do is... Malka's dressed up as meow. You gave me such ideas, Luca. Um, <laughs> before next stream, uh, I will update some decks. In particular, Netzak is going to get a load of Pierce updates. I may rebuild author to use guns um or i might wait until i get another slot and then put exousia in and give her the guns unless somebody bags into the slot we'll see um i will redo some fights 
So I will redo the... Uh, I don't know which one it was. I think it was two of these, wasn't it? I'll redo the workshop fixer fight, because I think there are things in there I didn't get. Uh, I will redo the full stop office fight, which is this one. I will redo the... Um, the chain, rusted chains fight to get the uh, Jikan. And I will also redo the Meow fight. I, that's what I, I've, I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm calling it, I know it's the Musicians of Bremen, it's the Meow fight. I'm sorry, but I'm really not sorry. So, that's what I'm going to do before the next stream, all off camera, so that you don't need to see me re-fight the same things five times. So hopefully next time we meet, which will be in two days, so I don't have long to do this. Um, uh, Friday is when I'll stream again. I will. I've just realised there's a chicken, a donkey, hee haw, a dog, woof, I don't know what that one is. Presumably that one's Cluck? But I'm guessing this isn't the last we've seen of the musicians of Bremen. Or they're just. Um, they're just laying like law foundations, which is implied what they did with uh, with this one, or w which which one of the the general ones where it's like oh boss, but apparently the boss isn't in this anyway. So I'm just rambling. Um. Uh, let's see. Back to work in time to see the stream end for once. Say, Colinium. Honestly, you got pretty far tonight. Good job. Thank you, Skier. Uh, Malkuth floor has no theme. True, it doesn't. I sort of went for, like, business. That was their theme. Like, business casual. Not business casual, sort of business formal. Because Nathan's got, uh, like, the suit and Melon's got the suit. Because I don't want to change Melon's outfit unless I find something else that suits. And I really like Malkuth, so I wanted something that fit them both without being, a like, a full defining thing. But no, they're, I, they're unlikely to be the animals. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, we'll see if I, uh, when I get the uh, the meow on, how Malkuth looks as meow. Anyway, let's not be weird, guys. Come on, keep it clean. <clears throat> anyway, so I will redo those fights. I will hopefully max out those cards and pay key pages off stream, rebuild some decks around them, and uh, we'll come back in a couple of days to make even more progress. We haven't had an abnormality in a little while, have we? So I'm, I'm expecting those, I'm guessing those unlock after like beating the second, oh no we did beat the second fight. Yeah we did beat the second fight, I'm surprised they haven't unlocked yet, but I guess I, I'm missing specific, oh no there we got the second uh, leeway is the one for Collinium, not Collinium, sorry I saw Collinium, you sod. And full stop office, so yeah we are getting them, cool. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Um, I will be back, as I said, in two days, Friday, for some more Library of Ruiner. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, check out my Twitch. If you're watching on Twitch, check out my YouTube. I also post all the VODs. Uh, there's the Lobco. I did a full 100% Lobco playthrough. You should go check that out if you have not seen it already. Uh, join the Garen Weaver Discord. We talk on there a lot. Um... People may try and teach me how ranged attacks work, and I they will fail. Um, <laughs> um, and check out my social media, and check out my Patreon. Pledges on there make a big difference. Right. Sorry. This is a very, very rambly outro. I do apologise. A lot of theorising going on tonight. I'm fascinated by the, uh, the Angela stuff, though. Like, I have seen, because after Lobco, I went and looked up, um, sorry, no, I've done the outro, I'm just going to keep talking a little bit. After I finished Lobco, I went looking for Lobco fan art, and I found a, a picture of Angela in what I now know is her Library of Ruiner outfit with blood on her face. And it, it just didn't click for me that she couldn't bleed. So, like, I didn't see any significance of it. I guess I assumed it was somebody else's blood. But I realise now that they were capturing that moment. So although, like, 
yeah, it's just it's funny how things can't can not, can be not spoilers even when you know all the parts of it if you don't see the whole and things can be spoilers if you can see the whole without having all the parts. It's a tricky thing. That's why I say no spoilers at all. Better to err on the side of caution. Anyway, I'm actually going this time. Hello future people, goodbye future people, thank you very much for watching. Have a good rest of your week, I will see you on Friday, and I will catch you later.